Fancy taking a guess at the amount of money that was lost in DeFi hacks last year. Well, if the figure of $1.3 billion was your estimate, then you're bang on the considerable amount of money. Add to that the funds lost from smart contract bugs and other errors, it's clear that crypto is still a really risky place. But is there a way to protect yourself from these risks? Well, in the video today, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about insurance in the crypto industry and tell you about some of the hottest DeFi insurance protocols in the space. Miss this at your peril. Now, before we insure your crypto positions, I need to lay out some terms and conditions. Financial advice is not on my menu. Education and entertainment are what I can offer you. If your finances are causing you stress, contact a financial advisor to help clean up the mess. Now, if this is your first time stopping by, my name is Guy and crypto enlightenment is what I supply. The Coin Bureau is where you can get all the facts about coins, news, market moves, scandals, and hacks. All this and so much more besides, this channel is where true crypto knowledge resides. If this all sounds like your cup of tea, then subscribe to the channel and catch my vids as soon as they're released. And I'll tell you what else would be cool if you could ping that notification bell too. And if you're lagging behind, you can use the timestamps to skip ahead to any section you like. Right, that's quite enough reassurance. Let's get jiggy with some red hot insurance. Right, Professor Guy from the University of Cryptopia here to impart a little history lesson. Ah, no fidgeting at the back. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> now, technically speaking, insurance is a contract represented by a policy in which an individual or entity receives financial protection or reimbursement against losses from an insurance company. The concept of insurance, which entails the process of spreading risk amongst many, goes far back into history. Whether it was hunting giant elk in a group to spread the risk of being the one gored to death, or shipping cargo in several different caravans to avoid losing the whole shipment to a plundering tribe, individuals have always been wary of risk. Now, the first recorded instance of an insurance policy actually dates back to ancient Babylonian times with King Hammurabi's code. Then, in medieval Europe, with the emergence of the guild system, members began paying into a liquid insurance pool in order to cover any unexpected losses. Fast forward a few centuries, in the early 1600s, colonial ships sailing to the New World would secure investments and funding from a variety of entities and venture capitalists to spread risk around and ensure that each transatlantic voyage had multiple underwritings. The Great Fire of London in 1666 gave rise to fire insurance, while life insurance became more widespread and affordable after the invention of mortality tables, which helped predict longevity. So, insurance has long played its part in economics and society. But now, with blockchain, traditional insurance parameters as we have always known them are poised to be revolutionized from the ground up with the introduction of new, on-chain, and trustless insurance models. Now, blockchain has seen multiple use cases throughout the years, from peer-to-peer -peer payment coins to gaming and fine art tokenization. But there's now a group of up-and-coming blockchain-based projects that aims to catapult the industry to a whole new level, with a grade of complexity rivaling traditional businesses and top-tier financial structures. We are, of course, talking about the exciting, leading-edge DeFi insurance protocols. But I'll come back to these a bit later. Now, given the unprecedented momentum in the crypto markets throughout the last year, paired with the massive capital gains enjoyed by numerous individual and institutional investors, it was only natural for insurance to make its way into the digital asset space. There is a growing need and use case for it in crypto, and especially in DeFi. Having said that, the cryptocurrency business, which mostly consists of startups and exchanges, may not be big enough to provide substantial revenue for the insurance industry just yet. In fact, based on publicly available information, even North America's largest cryptocurrency exchange, Coinbase, 
currently holds only 2% of its assets insured with Lloyds of London. Anywho, insurance for cryptocurrency becomes particularly important when you consider the instability and high volatility of the digital asset ecosystem. With the recent skyrocketing valuations of Bitcoin and other cryptos, instances of theft from online wallets and exchanges have grown exponentially. For example, cryptocurrency worth $500 million was stolen from the Japanese digital asset exchange CoinCheck in January of 2018, a hack which ultimately shed light on how vulnerable the blockchain ecosystem can be and, inevitably, pushed mainstream financial entities and insurers away from the space. Other examples of the perils of blockchain security were the hacks suffered by Italian exchange Bitgrail in 2018, which saw $195 million worth of crypto stolen. Bithum, with over $30 million stolen. Mt. Gox, with $87.5 million. CoinRail, with $37.2 million. KuCoin, with $281 million. And Bitfinex, with over $60 million lost. And even exchange behemoth Binance reportedly suffered a loss of over $40 million worth of Bitcoin due to a security breach back in May of 2019. This makes me think that due to the weight of these hacks and breaches in the industry, cryptocurrency would represent a potentially lucrative business environment for both traditional and crypto-native insurance companies. But crypto assets do in fact present unique challenges for insurers. And because of how young the industry is, establishing a definitive set of insurance protocols is a complex endeavor. Typically, insurance premiums, i.e. the amount of money an individual or business pays for an insurance policy, are based on historical data. But such data is largely absent for cryptocurrencies. For instance, volatility in valuations, where three-figure price swings and 10Xs are not uncommon, can also affect premiums because it reduces the total number of tokens being insured. Moreover, regulatory uncertainty and lack of oversight at some crypto exchanges can also further complicate matters for insurance companies wanting to provide services in the blockchain domain. On top of that, despite the traditional insurance market being such a well-established industry, it's by no means a perfect one and has historically suffered from inefficiencies, fraud, human error, and most concerning of all, perhaps, cyber attacks. Consider this, for instance. According to a 2015 report by KPMG, American insurance company Anthem Insurance revealed a data breach that exposed the sensitive data of 78.8 million customers. This resulted in the company losing over $375 million due to identity fraud. Thus, while insurance has historically proven to be an effective model for asset protection, the fast-paced development of the digital asset economy could pose complications for traditional insurance companies looking to enter the space. And this is especially because the process of properly insuring digital assets would inevitably require major insurance companies like Alliance, for example, to undergo infrastructural paradigm shifts, a giant leap to have to make. However, while big traditional insurers might not be ready to tackle the crypto industry just yet, the unprecedented growth that the DeFi sector has experienced has led to the development of a few crypto-native insurance protocols. There's currently over $78 billion locked in DeFi protocols, and despite it being a new and emerging ecosystem offering trustless financial services to millions of people around the globe, DeFi naturally comes with hefty risks. From lending and borrowing protocols to yield farming and staking, users have more of their assets than ever before locked up in some of the most widely recognized DeFi platforms. And as interest in DeFi continues to grow from both individual and institutional investors, the need for sustainable coverage frameworks and DeFi insurance mechanisms is at an all-time high. So to remedy this, a few exciting projects have emerged in the crypto space looking to take the utility of blockchain coverage to an entirely new level. The current projects leading the DeFi insurance space are Nexus Mutual, Bridge Mutual, and I Trust Finance. Now, there are, of course, many other projects out there offering similar functionality, but let's start with the most established protocols. After all, you folks know I like doing things properly. Okay, so first up, Nexus Mutual. Nexus Mutual is a decentralized insurance protocol that's built on Ethereum. By harnessing the power and network effects of the Ethereum blockchain while adopting, quote, 
a people-powered alternative to insurance philosophy, Nexus Mutual seeks to deliver the infrastructure necessary for crypto users to get covered against smart contract failure and exchange hacks. Unlike traditional insurance companies, Nexus Mutual is community-centric and is run by its members. It leverages smart contract functionality to synthesize a community-oriented business model, one founded on the importance of community governance in determining the outcome of any insurance claim. Now, as the project's name suggests, Nexus Mutual is a mutual like any other. So an insurance mutual is a firm that is entirely owned by its policyholders, and any profits earned are either retained within the company or rebated to policyholders in the form of dividends or reduced future premiums. Examples of traditional insurance mutuals are, for instance, Mutual of Omaha, Prudential, Mass Mutual, and Northwestern Mutual. On the other hand, a stock insurance company is owned by investors who have purchased company stock, and any profits generated by the stock insurance company are distributed to the investors without necessarily benefiting policyholders. Typical examples would be Alliance, AXA, or Zurich, in which any profits generated are distributed to shareholders regardless of if they are policyholders or not. Now, as you can imagine, there are advantages and disadvantages to both models, and Nexus Mutual incorporates features from each. However, due to how young the project still is, its current applications are rather limited when it comes to usability and implementation features. Having said that, those applications that are currently available have sparked major interest across the DeFi space and have attracted many blockchain enthusiasts. That's because its main focus is on coverage and protection against smart contract failure, which has become a rather pressing issue in the emerging world of blockchain infrastructure. Despite smart contracts relying on their tamper-proof solid architecture, even they are subject to vulnerabilities. This could be in the form of exchanges being hacked, a specific token wallet malfunctioning, or even human error in the code base. Thus, Nexus Mutual aspires to create an insurance safety net against any potential smart contract failure, allowing its members to buy cover for smart contract correlated risks. Now, when it comes to community governance in Nexus Mutual, community members are responsible for assessing the risk associated with each smart contract on Nexus. In this scenario, in the case of an exploit, community members will be asked to vote on whether the claims are legitimate or fabricated, and if a payout should be structured at all. In order to participate in community governance, members can stake their NXM tokens, Nexus Mutual's native asset, with certain DeFi smart contracts, proportional to how secure the members deem the smart contracts to be. The more NXM a contract has staked, the cheaper it is for users to buy coverage. Basically, this happens because Nexus Mutual community members have technically put their capital at risk to say that a specific smart contract is reputable and relatively low risk. This creates a community-driven insurance protocol in which users who stake their NXM assets in high-risk contracts risk losing a portion of that stake in the event of the smart contract being hacked or compromised. Now, what's interesting about Nexus Mutual is that it can provide cover and protection against smart contract risk in top-tier DeFi protocols such as Anchor Protocol and many others with varying yearly costs and capacity levels. Out of all the other DeFi insurance protocols, Nexus Mutual is among the most well-established in the space, especially because of its number of integrated protocols, market capitalization, and adoption. If you want more of a deeper dive on Nexus Mutual, as well as how to use it, you can watch my video on it. I'll leave a link in the description for you folks. Okay, so that's Nexus. Next up, Bridge Mutual. Now, Bridge Mutual is a decentralized and DAO-managed risk coverage platform that provides insurance for stablecoins, centralized exchanges, and smart contracts, as well as other services. Bridge Mutual allows users to buy coverage for their funds, provide insurance liquidity in return for profits and rewards, vote on insurance claims and their respective payouts, and receive compensation for evaluating claims fairly. Furthermore, Bridge Mutual enables any user to build insurance liquidity pools for any smart contract, service, or exchange at any one time. Other users can then purchase coverage policies to insure themselves against potential rug pulls, protocol hacks, 
or exploits that result in the permanent loss of funds. Stablecoins are also insurable on Bridge Mutual, and coverage for stablecoins protects users against any potential devaluation that moves the assets off their pegs. Throughout the last year, the volume and circulating supply of stablecoins have absolutely rocketed, and over the same period, the asset value of loans in DeFi lending and borrowing protocols has also been on a steep upward trend. However, the increased value of the DeFi ecosystem as a whole has also led to an increase in the number of protocol hacks and exploits. Bridge Mutual was designed to be a long-term viable solution to these issues. And it seeks to provide a decentralized, scalable, and comprehensive ecosystem of smart contracts to ensure stablecoins, centralized exchanges, smart contracts, as well as other crypto and DeFi products. Moreover, Bridge Mutual offers users a set of attractive features, including yield generating strategies, clear profit sharing incentives, no KYC requirements, scalability and cross chain compatibility via Polkadot, and a team of lawyers, developers, and financial experts. Now, similar to Nexus Mutual, users can participate in the Bridge Mutual governance structure by purchasing BMI tokens, Bridge Mutual's native asset, and staking said tokens in the coverage liquidity pools. In addition to this, funds within coverage pools are simultaneously invested on-chain in other DeFi protocols such as Aave and Curve Finance. And users seeking asset insurance can use the Bridge Mutual platform to quickly gain access to quotes and purchase coverage for a wide variety of smart contracts, stablecoins, and exchanges. If a claimable event occurs and a user wishes to create a claim to collect on their coverage, they can do so directly on the Bridge Mutual platform. All claims on stablecoins are settled immediately, whereas claims on smart contracts or exchanges are settled through a three voting process within a six week timeframe. Okay, so that's Bridge Mutual. Last on our list, we have a rather interesting one iTrust Finance. iTrust Finance is a decentralized and permissionless protocol merging crypto asset staking infrastructures with risk management mechanisms. This creates synergies between high APY staking returns and the risks associated with such strategies. Now, what's interesting about iTrust Finance is that it implements a decentralized autonomous organization, DAO, mechanism to alleviate some of the bottlenecks inhibiting the DeFi insurance sector from achieving growth and advancing its value propositions. And in order to do this, iTrust Finance primarily focuses on three major cornerstones in the DeFi ecosystem efficiency, high returns, and protocol usability. Now, iTrust manages risks and simplifies the overall process of participating in DeFi protocols by offering users an easy-to-use platform that's backed up by a risk-assessed set of DeFi strategies. Furthermore, to achieve greater levels of efficiency, iTrust partnered with Nexus Mutual in June of 2021 to ensure higher coverage capacity for insurance protocols while enabling lower premiums. It does this through the implementation of in-house token vaults. These are used in order to manage the staking of Nexus Mutual's NXM and of its wrapped counterpart, WNXM, to increase coverage liquidity. Now, the process is quite intricate, but this is how it basically works. When users stake their NXM or WNXM in an iTrust vault, they receive staking tokens representative of their amount in the vault. These vaults essentially provide an onboarding ramp to increase insurance liquidity and cover capacity, as they allow stakers to access the synthetic counterpart of an asset, all while preserving the underlying value of their tokens, explained in this image here. In this instance, Nexus Mutual benefits from increased cover capacity and the user benefits from the rewards obtained through staking WNXM. On top of that, iTrust Finance provides a number of vaults with varying staking strategies to suit the risk appetite of a particular token staker. And iTrust Finance currently offers two different types of vaults for users to stake into. The first, called Vault A, represents an index of all the contracts available on Nexus Mutual. And the second, called Vault B, represents a low-risk, high-reward Nexus strategy developed by the iTrust Finance protocol. These mechanisms are designed to onboard more and more stakers into the iTrust Finance ecosystem with the goal of allowing users to simply stake their assets and receive rewards almost instantaneously. 
Moreover, iTrust Finance staking vaults in fact create additional liquidity for insurance protocols such as Nexus Mutual. Firstly, by enabling users to stake their capital and receive rewards, and secondly, by redeploying the staked NXM and WNXM to provide extra cover liquidity for a particular insurance protocol. Overall, through this mechanism, iTrust creates a productive market structure based on staking incentives and rewards to generate higher liquidity for coverage of the protocol. This, of course, produces mutually beneficial relationships between stakers and insurance entities in the DeFi-verse. And I, for one, am intrigued, to say the least. Right, that's it for most of my video today, folks, but a few of Guy's final thoughts before I leave you. While the traditional insurance business model has historically proven to be incredibly resilient and somewhat timeless, blockchain-based coverage is slowly but surely starting to take over. And there are quite a few up-and-coming projects in the space that are poised to utterly disrupt the insurance industry, not just in crypto, but potentially even in the real world as well. And given the general lack of regulation in the crypto markets, hackers and attackers are always on the lookout for discrepancies in new DeFi platforms. And with so many hacks happening over the course of the past two to three years, the need for DeFi insurance protocols has become acute. Now, the success of the insurance sector in blockchain is arguably contingent on the success of the DeFi ecosystem, where increasing valuations and growth in its total value locked will call for higher security measures. It's only natural, right? Having said that, insurance as an ecosystem simply doesn't appear to have received the respect it deserves. However, as the space evolves over time, I fully expect this to change and for insurance to be put on a pedestal at last. And ultimately, its success will depend on the amount of users engaging with insurance protocols and actually using them. Now, I might even experiment with some crypto insurance myself and update you good folks on the outcome. And that's almost all, folks, but I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions. So please don't hesitate to let me know and shoot me a cue down below. What do you think of blockchain insurance? Have you used any insurance protocols before? If so, which ones? Remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell if you'd like to keep getting the highest quality crypto content on the scene. Make sure you also check out the Coin Bureau Eclipse channel to get all the information you need on emergency crypto market, crypto project, and Coin Bureau updates right away. I will see you very soon, but until then, this is where I can be found, TikTok, Telegram, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribing to my weekly newsletter will make your crypto life sweeter. It's packed with all the tips and tricks that will make your gains stick. If you have some extra cash lying around for a Coin Bureau tea or sweater, then that's super. Thank you so much for watching, folks, and I'll see you all very soon. Adieu, crypto crew. Thank <laughs> you.